Hi, I'm Glyn from Mr. Glyn's Pickups, and today I'm going to have a chat with Waylon McPherson from McPherson's Stomp Boxes. Hi, Waylon. How, how, how are you doing? Yeah, good. How are you going? Splendid, splendid. Now, how did you get into making pedals? How did you start off? Wow, man, when I got, uh, well, initially it was, um, I just had a love of electronics. I was a diesel mechanic, and um, I really loved the, I suppose, the auto electrical side of it. And so um, once I left that and got into the music shop and around all the things that I loved, it sort of became, uh, yeah, I suppose it was a, a fairly organic uh, job to get into. So I, yeah, just started to, I had a big interest in pedals and I just started to make things that I, um, that I couldn't find or buy. That was kind of the, the way it started. So just, yeah, that sort of, that sort of jazz. <laughs> but you say got into pedals, surely there's a lot of electronic stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was, I was kind of, um, once I sort of got the bug for it, it was more, it was about study, um, yeah, getting a, a lot of reading material, books, and going searching the internet for um, just sort of trying to work out how all this sort of stuff worked. And um, I'd already had a knowledge in electronics, and it did sort of come fairly natural to me. So it wasn't um, wasn't too difficult to to um, yeah start coming out with ideas of my own and things that I really wanted in, in my sort of um, in my rig and in my gear. Yeah. Well, when was this? 2008 is when McPherson Stompbox was started, but that whole crazy sort of passion thing started probably about, I suppose, five years before that. So that was just after I finished um, being a mechanic and, um, yeah, went into the music store and started to sort of get stuck in there, yeah. So, so was there much information on the internet then? Because I know there's circuit diagrams for everything now. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a bit. Yeah, there was a couple of good um, sort of DIY websites and... Um, there was, yeah, there was a, a bit of help around. I mean, it's it's so much easier now. You can just find whatever you want. And but I suppose the thing with when I started doing it then is that you just weren't given a lot of, you know, given everything. You could just you had to really work at how things really worked. You couldn't just sort of go, oh, I'll just use this and copy this piece here. And uh, you had to know uh, how this what the circuit was doing to augment the the sound to to get what you wanted. So it was definitely a, a little bit of a, yeah, a little bit trickier, I suppose, than now if you want to build a clon, you can just go online and just build a clon. Um, yeah. So how, I mean, how much of it would be is experience intuition or is there a calculation? Um, it's, I suppose, yeah, I suppose most of it is, is a very practical based approach from me. I mean, I did, I was a bit of a bookworm sort of, Guy, so when I really got into it, I was I read a lot, um, just specifically audio. So what did you start off with? What, um, what pedals did you start making? The very first thing that I made was a, um, it was just a switch, and it was a couple of volume pots, and it, you the switch switch between those two different volume pots. I thought it was the greatest thing ever on the planet. So, and it initially it had no enclosure, just this. It was literally just like this switch and a whole bunch of wires and a couple of pots and a couple of jacks and i just and i didn't put it in an enclosure it was just sitting like on the bench and um yeah from the and uh, you know that's after you make that first thing um if it's something you're into that's you kind of you're done you're, you're going to just keep going and going and going and trying to find out more and more um but yeah it, it's kind of it's it was kind of like magic to me it was really i just found it really exciting and and um yeah, I still do really. Like it's kind of it's a weird thing to describe unless you're really doing something you enjoy so much. Like that time where you just finished building something and you that just before you get to fire it up, that moment is is awesome. And then when you when you fire it up and it's sort of giving you what you were hoping for, it's a pretty amazing sort of feeling. So yeah. Do you like the moment just before? Isn't that isn't that the the <laughs> moment where you're going, Oh I hope it works. No, it's, I like that. I, it's exciting. I just can't wait to. I mean, and then if if you get an issue or something that crops up, um, then that's just another little journey, really, because you're always kind of picking up something or learning something new. Um, yeah, you, it, you get thrown so many interesting, like things you wouldn't expect. So yeah, yeah. But yeah, I do love that part. 
that's the best. Right. But when it works perfectly, it's obviously better. <laughs> 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 than if you have to track down some random fault. But yeah, especially the handmade nature of how I build things, there's, um, in the build process, you uh, there's a lot of room there for if you're not really on on task while you're building, you can, uh, there's human error because everything's just so much human involvement and so little like uh, computerized PCB um, manufacture. It's, um, yeah. I've seen inside your pedals. Yeah. I've, yeah, the, the first thing I do, uh, in fact, probably now because yours are so impressive on the inside, that whenever I see any pedals, I just have this desire to take the back off them. Um, yeah. yeah, man, that's, that is something I do all the time too, actually. I, it's, it's, you can tell when there's been a lot of love put into it and a lot of time and they've thought out. It's not just a whole bunch of components chucked on a board in the right order so um and it does it does really make a difference like lead dress and um where your components are laid out all those sort of things do make a difference to how it sounds and um if you want to get the best out of it um for sure really how, how they're laid out makes a difference yeah and the lead dress where your wires are going so if your wire there's certain wires if they're too close to certain um other wires or certain components or certain spots on the board you can get like oscillations and noises, hums and buzzes and problems like that. Um, depending on the pedal, obviously, if it's a fairly clean sort of thing, it probably won't matter too much. But if, yeah, if you're talking sort of a bit more grind and a bit more dirty sort of um, tones, then, yeah, you, you can run into some problems for sure. Okay. Mm. I, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realise that. Because you're dealing with such a small amount of, of current, though, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's tiny. The, the thing that taught me that the most was when I built, because I built quite a few amps, and my first amp was like a, um, I li it literally was a piece of wood with some copper nails smashed into it. That was the circuit board. And then I just twisted all the wires around those nails and soldered everything together. And I had so many problems with that amp, like squealing and um, going nuts all the time. And it was it was literally just how I'd done my lead dress. It was the, the wires weren't, you know, there's certain wires too close to wires that, were um that they shouldn't have been so yeah so then you do get the same in pedals for sure yeah okay now another thing that i know we've talked about before is 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 the tolerance of of components yeah because, I, because there, there's a there's a there's a plus or minus aspect yeah. and when i mean how, i don't know how many components would be in the average pedal um probably i don't know you know 20 yeah. 30 yeah you can have like 50 components in a pedal yeah absolutely right. so if all of them are five percent that's right, yeah, and you, it, it's absolutely true. Like, and that's probably one of the reasons why you can sometimes just get that one pedal that sounds incredible, like that, uh, like that one. Uh, we're, I think we were talking about a rat earlier. How um, you can just get uh, out of ten rats, you'll find one that's just particularly good, and that can be massively down to component tolerance and how that actually, um, yeah, affects the the overall outcome of that pedal. So yeah, you do you. Definitely, I, there's a, I think there was a, the other day I was building an Omni compressor for a guy, and when I finished it, um, it was just one of the best ones I'd ever made. It just, for, for whatever reason, it just sounded really, really good. And um, it's definitely got to come down to that, even though we use really tight tolerance components. Um, there's still discrepancies here and there, and yeah. And, and, and you kept that one? No, I, I still, I was almost going to keep it. I was like, oh, <laughs> man, I really want to keep this one, but no, I still sent it off and yeah, there was. Uh, yeah, you do remember the ones that you particularly like. I mean, it's it's a small, it's a small thing, but it's enough to make. Oh, that's a that's a particularly good one, or a really nice white fuzz, or whatever. Yeah. Did you Did you tell him? I did. Was? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I said, yeah, that was a particularly good one. He probably just thinks I said that to everyone. <laughs> really good. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I um, know uh, he really enjoys it. So that's cool. That's, yeah. So uh, I've had a look at your website, obviously. The white fuzz, the black fuzz, what's the difference? Right, right. So the white fuzz. fuzz, fuzz eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there is. Man, when it comes to fuzz, isn't there just so many flavors of fuzz um, for something that's a fuzz? You know, there's. Uh, I could have so many fuzzes on my board. But anyway, the white fuzz is kind of exploring that, the sort of the lower gain part of fuzz. So the sort of the overdrive, fuzzy overdrive almost clean right through to some pretty decent square wavy fuzz stuff um, where the black fuzz kind of 
carries on from there. So the Black Fuzz is, is more sort of synthy, experimental. It's pretty full on. Um, and it does that really, really well. It does do some pretty normal, I suppose, heavy fuzz sounds as well. But um, yeah, it's it's not for, I suppose, the faint of heart, that one. It's it's pretty nasty. But the white fuzz is, I mean, and the white fuzz is still one of my favorite fuzzes because you can just use it for so many things. I've, I've used it even on my acoustic. It sounds really good. Um, yeah, and you can just put just a little hint of here and there, and it sounds just super sweet. So yeah, it's a quite a cool circuit, and it's a bit different because they're both MOSFET based, which is a little different from the usual sort of fuzzes that are around. Oh, interesting. Mm. And, and the much difference in sound between MOSFET? Um, I feel like MOSFETs give a really sort of a, a muscular type fuzz, if that even makes sense. So yeah, they they are they have a really yeah quite a strong sort of um, thick fuzz tone well, it's really pleasing it almost sounds a little bit like um like an amp clipping type sound like a tube clipping even though it's so cliche and everyone's pedals sound like tube amps nowadays but like yeah I, th I think it's kind of more that down that sort of um route it always sort of appealed to me anyway yeah right and and that which brings me on to something we've talked about before as well which is how a pedal feels to play yeah because it's not just the sound it's yeah you're very different and react differently to how you, if you tickle them or if you dig in. And Yep. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and um, actually, weird that you should say that because I was watching a uh, interview with Eric Johnson the other day and he was actually talking about the exact thing, how for him the, the tone can be not quite there but as long as the feel is there. And that's one of the most important aspects for him. And it's something I've always really felt was was quite a big deal for me with designing pedals it's got to be it's got to feel really good and um yeah that's uh every pedal that i build has to have that feel that makes it kind of addictive for me to want to keep playing where you sort of lose track of time you know and you're just having a good time yeah yeah so you don't you don't have mod any modulation pedals on your site no i don't i don't i was I've always wanted to do a modulation pedal. Um, I've kind of dabbled with a few designs and things that I like. Uh, it's I've, it's got to be something I like more than something else for me to put my name on. I don't want to just clone something because um, there's some good modified clones of things out there anyway. Um, but And also, if I built a modulation pedal, due, due to the amount of components you use, it'd probably be like this big. It'd just be this monstrous thing, and especially the way I build. It would just be massive, but um, I have yeah, I've, I've done it a couple of times. I built a Univibe once in a, like a cake tin. I had this big cake tin, and I wanted to build an authentic Univibe with all the like the little bulb and everything. And um, yeah, it was in this massive cake tin. It took up like the whole thing. It was totally impractical, and it looked really bad. And plus, when you every time you stomped on the stomp switch, the whole cake tin lid would sort of cave in a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah, so it just didn't go well at gigs, really. So yeah, had to flag that yeah. one. Yeah, good for cakes. Yeah. <laughs> for cakes, yeah, maybe, yeah. Mm. Oh no, I just, I just, I just wondered. It's, um, yeah, but people seem to say, seem to specialize in 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 certain things. Yeah, yeah, and I've always gravitated towards um, what I need for myself. So it's always been down really more what I I really want or what I want to hear. Um, I've tried to I've built a couple of delays just for myself. But nothing that I'd consider putting my like our brand on and and selling just because it was it was a good delay. But it, there's probably other ones out there that that are better or I like more. I actually I tend to like digital delays anyway, and I don't do anything digital at all. Um, yeah, so. Oh, cool. So um, the the hype about the clone. The clone hype, yeah. I mean, the clone is. I mean, I love clones. I think. Yeah. I, I think I've got one on trade me at the moment that I built. I built, but um, but yeah, the Klon is a beautiful sounding overdrive. I mean, I use I don't really use it as that. I don't use the overdrive part almost at all when I use one. I almost have the drive on nothing, and just use it purely to boost, like a slightly dirty boost. But um, yeah, I mean it's it's a great pedal. I think the the all the hype was, you know, like you said, it's probably not his fault. I think it was just how they go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they are, I mean, yeah, yeah, you're right. They're good. They, they, they're the, that's the sort of overdrive that really suits me. I think, or the yeah. sort of other I really like. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, it's good. So, the, so the the look of your pedals, you have yeah. the wood on the top of them, and I've seen you got wood on the circuit board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Such a different look. Where, where, where most, well, a lot of pedals these days look like the cover of a Marvel comic or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, we had gone, went on a bit of a journey, like from the start, just silk screening, and then we thought we we're going for the whole laser cut thing, and then we just found it difficult to. We had to outsource all that stuff, and and it's always hard to get exactly what you want um, when you're outsourcing all the time. So we decided to go a bit different and have a look, try to have a go at printing onto wood which is just massively challenging um just prepping it cleaning it the whole thing just to get just to actually print on a nice and clean um and certain woods don't like getting printed on as well and uh yeah i just love wood i love the wood and metal thing i like the combo of that and um yeah the insides wanted to sort of make it look the same and the whole idea behind the pedals really is to sort of have like the like how handmade guitars like an ultra handmade guitar everything's as handmade as it can be that's kind of that's the direction we're going anyway with our pedals it's more to try to get that handmade ultra handmade vibe in a pedal which is you know something that's not really that i haven't seen as handmade anyway i've seen a lot of um, beautiful built pedals but um yeah i love I, it's very satisfying for me building something like that right so who 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 buys your pedals? Well, they- we've well we've got uh, most of our pedal um, sales are mostly export now. Since we changed about three years ago to going that ultra handmade route, and then like our prices went up by a lot because there's just so much more time in them now. But so uh, for a while there, we were dealing with China, so we're only dealing with um, high end China clients um, selling into there, um, which was really good until um, the old COVID happened um yeah and then it's just it's just random places around the world really is where we sell and we still sell a few into new zealand for sure but yeah it's it's mostly export and um yes it's it's a lot of collectors and studios we sell them to um sometimes we just don't know it's just someone that's bought them on our website i always like to find out where they're going or who the person is it's kind of nice to know where they're going um because it's funny you do remember them like that when if a pedal ever comes in for something like a maintenance or like a jack that needs replacing it's funny how you remember that particular unit, even without its serial number, just how it's actually been built. Kind of such a yeah weird nerdy <laughs> thing to. <laughs> no, that's really cool. <laughs> no, that is that's really cool. And then yeah. you 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 so you you repair pedals as well, not just your own. Yeah, so we do. Uh, really, primarily, what we do now is we do guitar um, servicing repairs and amp revalves and that sort of thing and we yeah we'd still repair pedals from all around the country which is awesome because i love getting to try like loads and loads of different pedals yeah, um, yeah. so yeah we're, uh yeah we it's 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 pretty cool actually the new the music community especially here in Tauranga, like it's um really close knit and everyone knows everyone and it's a real friendly sort of vibe which is great like everyone just sort of gets on really well um and it seems to be uh yeah, around the rest of the country as well. The the sort of vibe we get coming in at the moment is really good, which is um which is nice, especially since this year's been such a mission for everyone. Yeah. I, I I I feel that as well. I mean, the people, I, I just don't see any dicks. You know, everyone seems to be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 it feels really nice. It does really feel like a community. I, yeah. I've, I've I've saw quite a few pickups of people in Christchurch. It seems to be Christchurch is where yeah. they go. And yeah. great, it's really nice, you know. Yeah. People don't know me, and, but yeah, yeah I'm making a few friends down there, which is really cool. It's isn't Christchurch a scene? Like we get loads of pedals from Christchurch, broken pedals, obviously. From and um, man, it's amazing. The scene, the scene there must be really good. I've never actually asked anyone what it's like, but they must have must have a lot of musicians, um, in Christchurch because they break a lot of stuff. Maybe they're just really clumsy. <laughs> yeah, they're just really like hard. <laughs> to get. They play hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 they're quite yeah, it's quite amazing. So so if I if I wanted one of your pedals or I wanted to repair stuff, how do how do I find you? Ah, oh, just go to you can go onto our Facebook page, which is um McPherson Stomp Boxes or McPherson Artists and Effects and Pedal Repairs or something kind of snazzy like that. Or um our website which is uh, McPherson Music dot NZ. And you, and you can just, there's a little form you can fill out there if you've got a repair or 
even just a weird idea, like a m- weird mod idea. I love all those. So um, yeah, people, sometimes people will hold back or they don't want to um, don't want to sort of get in touch. They might think it'd be a too weird or a weird zany idea they've got. But um, yeah, it's great to even just let me know. Even if we can't do it, it's just good to find out. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. Cool. Well, I think I think we'll wrap it up there. So. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much, Wayland. That's been it's been really informative. <laughs> no worries, man. Pleasure. No, it's good. It's always good to catch up, eh? So nuts. No, that was really cool.